Hello and welcome to Design Chat, the coolest internet discussion uh, on the web. I said that backwards, but that's okay because we're live uh, here with uh, uh, Michael Lebowitz of Big Spaceship in New York. Very honored to have you here. Thank you so much for, uh, for making it today. Thanks for having me. No doubt, man, and especially... And thanks for, uh, thanks for pronouncing my name right. Nobody else does. That's, really? That was good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Back. I've already achieved something. Wow, we should just end it now. You have. You have. Nicely done. <laughs> um, so, yeah, especially considering your crazy schedule, you're, you know, you know supporting a, um, a conference tomorrow. You're a big part of this Click conference. Why don't you tell us, let's start off with that. And tell us if, if nobody's ever heard of it, what is Click conference? Um, good question. The Click Conference is uh, put on by the wonderful creative publication Creative Review out of the UK and um, it is their um, sort of uh, digital focused creativity conference. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty open um, in terms of how it sort of programs itself. This is the second annual one uh, in New York, although it's lived a little longer in London. They also did one in Singapore this year. Um, wow. And uh, I participated in both New York and London last year and had an amazing time. Uh, just really nice, informal, great conversations uh, and, and interesting people. So when they asked me to, uh, to chair uh, this year, I was uh, obviously really honored and uh, and you know pleased that I got to uh, to help uh, a little bit uh, put together a, a, a lineup um, to just talk about everything from sort of infrastructure issues and stuff that's maybe a little uh, less overtly uh, related to creativity, although in my opinion it's directly related and. Uh, and everything else, whether it's entertainment, storytelling, um, you know, conversations about production and how to get things done. Uh, it's a pretty broad-reaching day. Uh, it should be really, really fun. That's awesome. I'm, you know, it's one of those things you hear about these conferences sort of popping up, and it's, you know, it, their their role is almost changing a little bit. Where you know, it's um, because we spent we have all these new ways of talking to each other so we do sort of conference with each other and share ideas and that sort of thing but now you know it sort of seems like conferences themselves where you're actually going somewhere and seeing people face to face that you might have been just talking with on you know twitter or chat or something like that it has a new sort of special meaning to it and you know i think these conferences are going to be more and more important for us yeah, I love conferences uh, more for the fact that they take you out of your usual day-to-day -day context even than for the content themselves. You know, that uh, there's there's a lot to be said in our very uh, asynchronous and distributed lives to everybody getting together in a room for a day and, and talking and listening. Totally. Um, so just for some of the people who are, maybe aren't familiar with Design Chat, um, what we're going to do here is we'll do about 45 minutes of conversation, then um, near the end we'll open it up uh, to the um, audience for a little Q&A. Um, so start thinking of some good questions from Michael. Um, so, okay, so New York, uh, Big Spaceship, uh, founded in 2000. So you guys are approaching uh, your 10-year your anniversary. Um, right. on, on the day that it was founded, on the day that maybe you walked into your, your first office, and maybe hired your employee. Where did you think you would be in ten years? Uh, then, like now, I'm totally incapable of looking forward that far. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, you know, starting an agency, especially in 2000 when the whole world was blowing up uh, the first time, uh, you know, it, you needed to be incredibly, perhaps painfully naive and I was um, so I just wanted to you know frankly I just wanted to make cool shit and um, <laughs> a, and so you know as much as I probably should have had a, a, a business plan and uh, a strong strategic focus uh, you know as much as I could probably retrofit something to that um, I, uh, I I didn't really I uh, you know Someplace along the way, I was like, "Oh, maybe we're kind of onto something here." People seem to be responding to what we're doing, but uh, but even now, you know, people ask me to predict the future, you know, two years ahead, five years ahead, what's going to happen for us or in general, and I just I kind of refuse to do it because right. I think what's fun about the industry is that that uh, it's changing all the time. 
very quickly. You know, it seems like yes. every week there's a new tool that changes the way that we talk to people or interact or share ideas or that sort of thing. And that's one of the things I love about, you know, you know, I wonder sometimes, you know, if we're, you know, 10 years away, 20 years away from now, when we're looking back at this time where we're having all this blow up of innovation on the web, you know, what are we going to call this period? What is this period for us? You know, I don't know if there's a real need to define it right now, but I know that 20 years from now, when we're looking back on it, this is going to be a special moment. Yeah, I agree. You know, I sort of feel like the last moment was really special, too. Everybody looks back at the first bubble as this purely negative thing. You know, everybody was, uh, you know, drunk on money and uh, and nobody was thinking about, you know, real business. But, uh, but there was one thing about that time that I loved because it was all brand new and nobody had ever done anything before. And so there was this whole spirit of, you know, well... We don't know if we can do it or not, so let's just figure it out, and uh, and and that's something that I think um, you know is maybe more pronounced then even than now because now as soon as money gets injected into something, there's a lot more caution. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean it's uh, it, it, I think you know it's interesting to sort of try to identify the the rings in the in the tree a little bit around this because it's really hard to see when we're still in its you know it's it's still so young mm -hmm. um, but I don't uh, yeah I don't think that there's a there's a drop off in innovation I just want I sort of feel like I always want to challenge everyone and then that goes for big spaceship and myself you know most of all just you know how do we keep uh, how do we keep challenging ourselves and how do we not be afraid um, you know, it, we should be afraid, basically, uh, it, it, not so much not fearing, but you know, everything we do should make us a little bit scared, uh, or it's probably not worth doing. But you, you were saying a second ago, um, you know, just the, find a way to figure it out. Is that sort of part of the big spaceship credo? Uh, is there a big spaceship credo? And, and I guess talk a little bit about um, as your numbers grew, um, you know, you, you start to wonder about how do you balance, you know, a large group with innovation. You know, how do you stop the group from becoming a, sm a slow-moving monolith, you know? Um, so what, what's right. the, the sort of big spaceship credo as far as innovation goes? Well, the credo, you know, I don't know that I've ever said this outside of the, the walls of big spaceship, but really the credo that I say to everyone uh, is, uh, is take care of each other, um, you know, internally. If, if, if everybody here takes care of each other, we will produce really good work because that's about trust and, uh, and respect and making sure that people are really, uh, you know, I mean, are really taking care of each other fundamentally. If you see somebody that, that is doing something, how can you add to it? You know, if you see somebody who's struggling, how can you help them? It's, you know, I really believe that it's, it's the soft stuff, um, you know, how culture and how people interact that really makes great work, not so much, you know, sort of hard processes, uh, although we do have those and we do think that there are ways of influencing uh, innovation that, that way. I mean, we, we're, we're organized in a team system, for instance. Uh, you know, we work in cross-disciplinary teams uh, with designers, developers, producers, and strategists all working together consistently over time. Uh, and the reason for that is for a long time we were, we were organized like most agencies are, you know, the designers sat with the designers, developers with developers, and it was, uh, you know, it, 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 you do that for a, for a type of um, sort of perceived efficiency. Um, but what I really realized is, uh, is that we, we're not in the business of producing design or code or you know strategic insight we're, we're in the business of producing the the integration of those things the manifestation of those and uh, and so having those groups you know really sit together and really sort of develop that team-based telepathy um, is one of the things that keeps us nimble to answer your, your your previous question you know we can keep having more and more teams but they become little sort of micro ecosystems uh, within the larger ecosystem of big spaceship and then we just give them a lot of autonomy to to solve problems on their own so as a uh, big spaceship started to grow and, and you you guys did more and more recognition um, you uh, started taking some gigs where you go out and you you'd do some speaking and talk about 
innovation in the, the digital sort of landscape. You know, and I always sort of imagine, you know, if, if that was something that I was engaged in, you, you go into a different mode. You go into sort of like a philosophical mode about what you want to say, why you think it's important, and how you want to communicate that. Have you seen that, um, that sort of thought process affect the way you think about your company at all? Just sort of having to talk about it out in the world, affecting how we think about it internally, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's everything is always such a work in progress for us and and for me personally, you know, I I talk to people in the world and I'm forced into situations or I put myself into situations where I'm forced to speak and and uh you know, I try to make myself uh uncomfortable every now and then um, <laughs> to see what happens. And uh and everything, you know, I mean, I I think that that doing good work in in this space is is really about sort of absorbing everything you can possibly absorb and then seeing how it all sort of reflects back into your work and how you talk and and how you think about what you do in real time uh and uh so in that sense i think pretty much everything i do is is you know including talking to you right now is actually affecting how i think about the company because those insights that come up if you remain open to them are the things that help you sort of keep up with change. Um, did I read correctly that you started your career, your professional career as an architect? Is that right? No, no, I'm, I'm terrified of being an architect. You have to oh, be way too smart. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, uh, I, oh, I, I studied film. I completely wrong then. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It's it's good to know that, that I've gotten to a point where there's misinformation about me. Yes, the <laughs> Otopod, the, the Otopod you know founders were it, architects. Right? Yeah. Uh, somebody just uh, somebody just uh, uh, tweeted that, and it's true. My good friends at Otopod, uh, the three partners were all uh, were all architects, okay. and they're all smarter than me. <laughs> um, so that totally tells the question where I was going. So I need to change direction now. I'm so embarrassed. Well, I, I studied film. Does that help? Yes. Let's talk about that. Film school. <laughs> I, uh, I I went undergraduate. I, I majored in film and uh, and and liked it while I was an undergrad because uh, because all my equipment and and film was paid for. You know, a hundred a hundred dollars a semester, and I could shoot all I wanted. Um, wow. And then when I got out into the real world, uh, that was no longer the case and and I think you know fundamentally I made some decisions based on being a lousy uh, starving artist and uh, didn't want to you know polish lenses for free for uh, for years to maybe maybe get to shoot, shoot some more film someday so uh, do you still dabble at all do you do any digital video um, you know we do it for work I don't you know it's it's funny it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword I don't uh, I don't make as many things personally as I used to um, you know, I mean, I'm the first to admit that I was a terrible designer. I mean, utterly mediocre in every way. Um, but uh, but I, I enjoy the sort of the collaborative process of making things with people from all different uh, disciplines. And uh, and that's I think that that's the sort of bridge between film and uh, and and what we do at Big Spaceship. You know, film is and especially at that point, I was the I was the last class at school. Uh, uh, that had that was still cutting 16 millimeter reversal film and taping splicing uh, actual you know tangible uh, film rather than the class the following year that got their uh, avid system which was then you know a hundred thousand dollar investment um, so it was a very uh, it, it was a different time but it really required tremendous collaboration it was not possible really to make a film by yourself so you're kind of old school then. It gives you some more street cred, right? Is that how it works? Yeah. Somebody, somebody just said I'm showing my age. Uh, if you can, <laughs> I don't know if you can see with the picture, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I used to say I'm prematurely gray, and I think I've recently had to drop the prematurely. I'm just freaking gray <laughs> now. Um, it, that was sort of a subject that we um, get into a lot is in collaboration and all the, you know all these things that you sort of have to know to be able to collaborate with different types of people who different, do different types of jobs and that the idea that you know you know your job function is going to be a singular thing is completely dead you have to all these roles are multifunctional roles and I think the idea of like titles 
are, you know, are sort of becoming prehistoric. You know, to put a title on what it is that you do anymore becomes very difficult because it, you know, almost any type of job you have anymore, you have to wear a lot of hats. Is that something that, that you sort of like encourage at Big Spaceship or look for? Well, I mean, we all wear a lot of hats without a doubt. Um, I, I tried for a long time to not have titles um, because I think that they're, you know, constricting the same the, the same way you're describing. But, um, you know, now I just try to keep them simple um, as much as is possible. I, you know, I've been seeing all these titles lately. I just saw somebody's title was like, you know, associate presentation layer architect. <laughs> just you know, what the fuck does that mean? I mean, it's just can't, is can't somebody just be a designer anymore? Oh, pardon me, sorry. Um, okay. I'm I'm a little profane, but I'll I'll try to lay off it. Um, yeah, we have we have a minister of technology. Somebody just tweeted that. That's uh, Josh, who uh, who runs our our technology group. Uh, he was you know I think the sixth person at Big Spaceship, so it was a time when he could just. Uh, could just choose what he wanted and it stuck and now when we go into client meetings it, it uh, invariably generates a, a laugh and a question when he passes his card out that says minister on it. <laughs> um, so when, when you're looking, when you're sort of expanding or looking to hire people, you know, um, if it's, let's, you know, focus it on design. If you're looking for a designer, you, you know, some sort of a, a Photoshop layer architect, um, <laughs> what, you know, what are the number one things you're looking for? And, and you're going to have a unique perspective, I think, because of the time that you spend uh, judging design competitions. Is, has that, you know, sort of phased or filtered your viewpoint when you're looking for designers? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I, it's funny. Um, it's funny talking about looking for designers because I don't really, you know, it's it's this thing that I've said a whole bunch and it gets really tired, but I don't, uh, it, it sounds trite, but I don't hire roles, I hire people. And, um, you know, I can write job descriptions and we have job descriptions, but what I'm really looking for first and foremost is when I sit down with a person, do I feel like they're going to, you know, come in and make this place better? And that doesn't just mean, you know, are they the most talented you know, person that we can get, I would, you know, if they're, if they're an asshole and, uh, oh, there I go again. Uh, if, if, if they're not a nice person, uh, and the, you know, second best or third best is a nice person, uh, I'll always go with the second best or third best because, uh, because the, the level of difference isn't enough to, to make up for the destructiveness of having somebody that isn't positive, uh, in your environment. And uh, the swear jar would not be full. I'm only uh, I'm only like two two swears in, whoever that is. Um, so you know it's uh, you know I mean it's definitely complicated uh, because there's so many different types of designers. Uh, you know I don't like the uh, I don't like the distinction very much because I think people have to you know, have to be able to sort of straddle all different types of demands. But, you know, there's certainly people who are more focused on standards design versus, you know, flash or motion design. Um, I, I just really like, uh, I like people who like to make things that are incredibly polished, incredibly beautiful, incredibly well thought through. Um, I tend to like portfolios where you don't just see finished work, you see how you got to the finished work. Um, you know, I, I, process is always more, um, you know, process is always more informative when I'm looking and reviewing uh, portfolios than uh, than just sort of the shiny end product because everybody's got that. Um, I was sort of glancing through one of your uh, PDFs that you put online of one of your talks that you, you've given and you had a couple of things in there that I want to touch on that are, I think are just tremendously interesting. You know, this idea, this theory of having your corporate structure being sort of a flat structure, you know, which is something we already I, sort of touched on, you know, where there's no more hierarchy or process than you need. Um, yeah. And also at the same time, hiring people and surrounding yourself so that uh, you're the dumbest person in the room. That you, you know, and I love the way that that was sort of worded, you know, it's the idea of, you know, you, you put people around you that are going to lift up your game you know, and bring your, bring your work to a higher level. Yeah, that was something actually I should credit um, my, 
my longest standing client who's also a very good friend uh, uh, you know we've been working together for you know almost nine years and uh, he once said you know there's there's two ways to manage you you either want to be the smartest person in the room or the dumbest and uh, and you know I think uh, the implication is obvious that you always want to to try to be the dumbest person in the room because that means you're going to learn and you've surrounded yourself with with people who can you know elevate everything that you do um, so I, I don't think in that uh, in that deck I actually credited him, um, but but now I just you know secretly gave him a shout out. I'm pouring one out for him. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, it, it's not so much about size, um, you know, I, it, that that's the issue. You know, I've, I've certainly struggled with you know scale being a uh, scale being an issue when you're trying to maintain a, a really fast-moving, nimble, creative, and innovative culture, but it's also, you know, it's also your sort of internal workings, you know, if I, I try to, I try to think about it a little bit more like we don't have processes, we have frameworks that describe how, you know, sort of flexible frameworks, so we do run things through a process, but it's a pl process that has enough elasticity that it, that it can adapt to the the individual challenge, the, the the bespoke challenges of what is ultimately bespoke work. Um, so yeah, we you know we have titles, and some people have been here longer and have more experience. But ultimately, with the team system, it's really about the teams, mm -hmm. and um, and those teams operate as a unit, and uh, and. For uh, you know, beyond that, there's there's myself and uh, and a few others just trying to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, the idea of the word scalability uh, seems to be brought up a lot recently because because it's applicable to um, so many things that you know as digital sort of creatives that we're involved in. Whether you're talking about the scalability of your web app, the scalability of your your reach and your communication or the scalability of your brand itself and, and where that can take you um, it's just been really cool recently to watch some of these new um, innovations on the web you know of course Twitter you, you've got to talk any conversation on the web right now you sort of have to bring that up at, some, at one point or another um, to see you know the ways that people are using it and um, is it now, with this whole sort of like social media craze that's going on right now, how much has that sort of crept into the conversations that happen at Big Spaceship? Well, I mean, I guess a lot in a certain way. I mean, we, you know, we are not a, you know, that horrible expression, a web design company. Uh, we're not, um, you know, we don't define ourselves in terms of the sort of, you know, the place where things get, you know, the artifacts that get created. It's really about, you know, to do this well, you know, I, I think you just need to understand human behavior and, and what people are doing and how they're doing it. Um, and so as that stuff shifts into social spaces, um, it's our job to be on top of that and understanding how we can, you know, reach those people in an authentic way. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I, I have a little bit of a, a problem with the, uh, the sort of the term social media, capital S, capital M, because, you know, all media is social and always has been. Uh, it's just there are sort of new ways to, uh, new behaviors that are, are surfaced by the digital world that weren't there before. And, um, you know, but people have been talking about media and been social around those things uh, forever, except for advertising, which is is the only media that isn't particularly social. Um, you know, so and, and and that sort of extends to the idea of a social media agency. I mean, I think that there we're we're still looking for terminology around these things, but uh, that terminology is is a little suspect to me because really it's about how do you, you know, how do you reach people. Um, speaking of reaching people, you have an interesting side project going on right now called uh, uh, Capture, Q-A-P-T-U-R-E, um, and it was one of those things I sort of like stumbled on it just by sort of like clicking around, and uh, you know, it's, it's a really interesting project, so for those people who aren't familiar with it, uh, give us a brief uh, synopsis. Um, well, Capture, we do a lot of sort of internal 
R&D work and just sort of, you know, trying to prove out ideas and prototype them. We do what we call sprints, you know, capture was a sprint. Um, you know, I think we launched the initial piece of it in three or four days. Um, but it was kind of based in the idea that you want to, you know, basically I was, I, I'm a, a, a big fan of, uh, of Twitter, I enjoy it. I get a lot of valuable content from it, uh, a lot of valuable inspiration from it, and um, so I was thinking about how there was a, a, a fair amount of discussion about how Twitter represents a potential sort of new vector of search, where Google has completely dominated intent-based search. Um, you know, Twitter has the has the potential to do sort of sentiment-based search and real-time sentiment, um, and so that was interesting. And and then the other thing is, I tend to look at things that are lossy and be frustrated by them. I think the design is a great uh, it, it, a great way to look at good design uh, or certain kinds of good design is sort of reducing friction and reducing lossiness um, in processes, and. You know, I found that the more people I followed on Twitter, uh, you know, the 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 wider the spigot got, but the current is always running at the same speed. Um, so it became completely random. It is completely random uh, whether you actually encounter something interesting. You just happen to you have to happen to be downstream of something to get value out of it, and um, that seemed too random to me. So I was trying to sort of figure out with my team how to how to take a stab at at playing with that and um, and so the idea of capture was sort of how do we take people that we think are interesting and freeze frame the content that they're sharing so you don't have to be downstream of it um, and then also try to work some popularity indexing into it so you're trying to surface the most relevant or the most um, impactful content uh, that's going through something that I ran into um, you know few months into Twitter when, you know, I just kept on searching for all of the interesting sort of design related topics that I could find and, and following every single one of them. And there was this threshold where it no longer was a sort of interesting thing I could tap into once in a while. It was an overwhelming flow of content in my face that, you know, could be a total uh, time black hole, you know, and take up my whole day. So it, you know, and then TweetDeck comes along, and they're building in features all the time. Um, and one of their most powerful ones is their the way that they can, you know, have uh, columns that are bringing in just the topics you want to hear about. Um, and so, exactly like you were saying, it's you know the the idea of search is sort of changing, and I'm seeing it as you know the value in that now is the power of filter and being it and knowing that. There's all this content on, you know, all these people talking about interesting things, and how do you take out of that crazy flow what you want to hear? And I think capture right away. I got it. I saw it in like, you know, it's one of those things like you know it's a good idea if you can understand it in like a split second. And um, I love it. I really hope that it takes off and, and you know and and, um, and and gets a lot of traction because I I think it's going to be a useful tool. For a lot of people who are involved in consuming sort of you know digital creative media. Well, that's the idea. I mean, we started with the categories we have um, because those are the people we know best, I and mean, those are the people we were trying to follow. Um, we're working on a on a version two now, based on all of the sort of insight we've gotten through through the first version, and uh, and uh, which has been. Um, really tremendously valuable. Um, it's also just exciting when you put something out into the world just to see what happens and people actually get value out of it. I mean, that's that's kind of my favorite part. Um, and um, so this, the, the, the new version, I think, will make it easier to um, not just, to, you know, I think there's a lot of really good tools for discovering new people to follow, um, but I think discovering new inspiration um, that's being shared and that's sort of surfacing at any given moment is still pretty untapped and so hopefully we're gonna gonna focus on that uh, a whole lot more and and try to you know like you're saying I mean filters become tremendously valuable curation becomes tremendously valuable and so the the shift we're trying to make and I don't know if we're gonna quite get there with version two is um, is to go from that random 
that we were trying to solve into a little bit more of sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, happy serendipity. You know that that you're never you're never going to sort of mathematically or we're never going to simply mathematically you know freeze all of the best content, but we can use the social stream um, to uh, to make it more possible, you know, there's an element of discovery and serendipity is a really positive feeling, but it's a it's a it's a fine line between that and feeling like everything's completely random, which is not uh, not an effective way of uh, of of discovering new things. Completely off topic, um, kind of a weird question, and I could be completely off base on this and tell me if I'm you know an idiot. Uh, is the Flash microsite dead or dying or is it thriving? Uh, d none of the above. Um, you know, like anything, it's it's uh, you know it's it's there for a particular thing, and that, that thing can be. You know, I, I think it was overused, and so there, people are getting smarter and more strategic about how they uh, how they use. You know, I don't even really like the expression microsite, but like how they use sort of um, destination immersive experience type uh, of work. There's still a, a real value for that, but um, it's it's uh, you have to have a really good reason to build a destination because you know you're not just competing with uh, with all of the other you know, brand advertising destinations in the world, you're competing with, you know, the things that people really care about, like their social spaces, their friends and Facebook and, you know, their video content and Hulu. So that's a, that's a battle that advertis advertisers can't win without providing a whole lot of value and, um, and being, you know, judicious about, uh, about their or judicious, judicious in their strategy, um, so that they don't uh, sort of take the if you build it they will come approach. Because because if you build it they won't come. That's that's the rule. Um, but there's a, place, there's a place for it. There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's always a place for it. Sorry, I need to cut you off for a second. I think we're getting some uh, yeah. audio yeah. feedback. We might need to um, I don't know either refresh your screen or, or plug in, unplug and plug your. Uh, your uh, your your audio. Can you yeah, yeah, no good, no good. Oh yeah, it's a horrible feedback. <laughs> horrible, horrible feedback. feedback. So okay, how about okay, should I, should I... hit refresh on your uh, browser and then log in again, and uh, it should clear it up. So everybody who's hanging it's out, better, it's, uh... you do that too. Oh, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna do it too. So everybody, take a two-minute break. We're gonna refresh our browsers. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be right back. Okay. okay, I'm back. You, you still got a, uh, quite a sizzle on your audio. Am I, how am I sounding? You sound fine. fine. Nothing changed. Uh, I can turn the input level down. Yeah, maybe that'll do it. That better? No, you got bacon going on, man. Well, I guess I'll uh, get rid of the headphones and we'll just have to, after, after talking up how great they were, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a shame. The uh, earlier on, the, I was commenting on just how amazing the sound is coming out of that set of headphones. Bet there's just somebody at Big Spaceship on BitTorrent right now. Oh, there you go. You just cleaned up. Good. All right. Yeah, you're clear. Fantastic. I was just saying we should we should probably build that into the show. We should, at uh, half an hour in, we should do a like a clear your cache break. And uh, can give everybody a chance to sort of clear their throat and take a take a stretch. Um, all right, well let's uh, let's keep on plugging along then. Um, so let's let's get in some uh, techie nerdy questions. Um, Adobe Flash versus Silverlight. Um, 
you know, there was that big splash that came out uh, like around um, the new year and uh, Silverlight, or, or previous to the new year, the, the last Olympics where it was exclusively used, being used, uh, Silverlight, uh, for, uh, to sort of broadcast on the internet and that sort of thing. And then it sort of quieted down. Um, you know, being a designer, it's one of those things like, if you're able to, you know, be an interesting designer and be able to use Flash and interactive media, there's this like weird crossover where you got to all of a sudden you got to start programming. You got to start understanding the languages and why you click on this and why you click on that. Um, how much of the battle of like Silverlight versus Flash have you seen, and and is there any tech war that sort of happened, you know, like a Bing versus a Google fight in your office? Yeah, we're we're battling all the time. Um, uh, you know, I mean, Flash is a really mature platform. Uh, you know, it's 11 years old, and so it's had the the benefit of uh, of software is an iterative thing, and uh, you know, sort of start right out of the gate. I mean, I started playing with Flash at Flash 2. You know. Wow. Uh, Come a long way, let's say, and Silverlight at at uh, at its age is uh, yeah, Future Splash, good memory, whoever that is. Um, you, you know, it's uh, Silverlight's pretty far along considering how young it is, and of course Microsoft has really deep pockets and can that will encourage uh, plug-in adoption and. Uh, you know, I think it's I think we're losing some audio on you. You might have uh, some employees heavily bit torning out of your office again. <laughs> you gotta uh, crack the whip. Um is I it think you're back. Now? Yeah, you're back. Okay. Okay. Well it's uh yeah, I see people names of uh, people in my office getting called out now. Um, <laughs> uh I uh, I think that it's you know when when Adobe acquired Macromedia it created less competition and you know two entities that really spurred each other on and uh, and you know I appreciated the 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 merger when it happened. A lot of time uh, with Adobe in a whole bunch of different capacities, um, and uh, then the uh, emergence of Silverlight has sort of brought a little bit. They, you know, Adobe has to get scrappy again, and it kind of I think a big. You know, it's a it's not a David and Goliath thing. It's a Goliath and Goliath thing where where Microsoft has the money and resources. Massive, massive camp of developers, um, but uh, but Adobe has you know near complete market dom domination. You know, yeah, so, there's definitely a battle that I want. I'm I'm excited about seeing. Um, I'm excited about seeing where it takes the innovation. I'm not excited about having to learn two different platforms. You know, as a designer, like it's one of those things, like you know. And I'm a small pie of the people who are involved in Flash and interactive designing. Where um, I'll, you know, I'll get to design an experience um, and then delve into the sort of roughs uh, of the interaction at the beginning phases, and then um, and then for another, in, I won't touch it again for two months. Yeah. So then two months later, when I get back into it, I gotta try and remember all the things that I learned and figure figured out by making mistakes the last time, you know, so at the same time, I'm excited for where the innovation of the competition goes. I, man, I don't want to have to learn two platforms. It's like a, if Photoshop had a heavy contender against it, I would not be excited about having to learn both of those, you know, depending on what client I was working with and, uh, you know, and what print shop, like, you know, like the, de the death of cork, you know, is all pr pretty much died out from the print industry. And, you know, at one time that was a frustration that was going on, like when I was in school, having to learn InDesign versus Cork, and then depending on who you were working with, you had to have either program or the most updated one, you know, and it turned into this big mess. But now it seems like the interaction uh, platform is the only one that's really having any competition. I mean, unless you talk about, you know, the, the open source 
uh, programs that are out there, you know, that are gaining some traction, but it's, you know, that I think that's more of a David and Goliath situation. There's some there's some good stuff coming on the Mac, uh, you know, Acorn and some software. Audio is down again. Uh oh. Hello. <laughs> oh, you're back. Testing. I'm yeah, back all again. Right. Apparently, I have to turn and look at my audio levels for it to work. So <laughs> I'll just look away. Um, you know, I uh, again, I think you know. It is challenging to have two platforms, um, uh, but you know I think overall it's better for the industry. You know, there's going to ash for a long time because everybody's already it, and Microsoft has a whole lot of work in front of uh, in front of it to um, to overcome that, and also to you know. Um, development environment up to uh, to the level that, that Flash is at because of its maturity. At the same time, they're tapping into a massive developer base, um, you know, that not have already come over to the ActionScript side of the world. So maybe it just, you know, spurs more types of creativity. I mean, it's easy for us to be myopically focused on our industry. Once the... Uh, the plugins are in there. The average consumer is not aware of whether it's Silverlight or Flash. It's just content. It's just what they're trying to experience. Um, honestly, I mean, we, we're we're doing a Silverlight project right now. Um, uh, justify our our experience in Flash, um, but uh, you know, our team has really picked it up. I mean, it's not, uh, I think, you know, developers, obviously, more and more as the landscape changes need to be rather than just a single specific um, but, you know, you understand good object-oriented principles and uh, our, our team has um, our team has, you know, internally just, you know, begun to take on iPhone development and Silverlight and whatever else, um, just because that's how the landscape's changing, and I think that that's part of the the fun of it, and also the uh, we've got a we've got a fun sort of experiment going on right now with the people who are in that chat room listening to you being um, either censored or, or bleeped out. <laughs> I'm guessing it's Mashable that you know they're mad at you now and they're they're muting your <laughs> audio every three seconds. Um, but that's okay. We'll just keep on pressing on. Uh, we're nearing the end anyway. We've got about 15 minutes left. Um, so let's open it up to uh, the audience. We've got 91 active users hanging out with us right now. Let's interact. Um, you've had some time, folks. Uh, start asking some questions. And if, uh, if they're not being answered or if you can't hear them, just keep on throwing them up up there and uh, and we'll try to get to them. So, um, Michael, if you see anything interesting, jump up there. Go ahead and uh, and start to address it, and I'll throw some of, so, throw some of them out there also. Um, why Big Spaceship use mainly PC from GoGo -Go Danny? Does Big Go -Go Spaceship Danny is is we're very ill informed. Uh, we're we're uh, largely a Mac shop. Um, we have a few PCs for obvious reasons, but. Um, what is it about Silverlight versus Flash for multi-touch systems? Now that's something I have absolutely no experience in. Um, are people developing Flash applications for multi-touch, you know, touchscreen systems? You you can. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know what it is about Silverlight versus Flash for multi-touch systems. That don't know. I mean, I assume that there's some of the underlying stuff in Silverlight is is baked into the Surface, which is a really cool um, platform. But I don't really know that much about it. The multi-touch experience we have is uh, is developing for the iPhone. Uh, Alonzo is asking, Hey, Michael, how do you see the Corpsify experiment from a creativity standpoint? I'm not familiar with the Corpsify experiment. So, are you? Ah. Uh. Yeah, well, Corpsify is our newest sort of internal uh, 
nocturnal project that we've started to put out into the world. It's a it's a collaborative drawing game uh, based on Wizard Corps um, sort of parlor game, surrealist parlor game, uh, and based on Book Connect. So it's at uh, corpsify.com if somebody wants to. Uh, It's uh, it's it's just a um, oh the beta password right here I'll do it. And just in case I forgot to mention earlier, um, there's an account in here. Uh, it's a Twitter account. Design chat links during the discussion. Uh, they, they'll post up links to you know things we're talking about. And if later after this uh, chat you're you're thinking of something and you want to find that link, just go to twitter.com/slash/designchatlinks and uh, all of them are recorded there. Um, yeah, so Corpsify, you know, we we actually built uh, an exquisite corpse game in Shockwave in 2001, and um, uh, it was really successful, but we were only four, four or five people and couldn't really keep up with it, and I've always wanted to bring I think people tend to talk about, sort of, as we were talking about before, social media as a thing rather than a sort of a, 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 an opportunity. So, you know, captures one vector of experimenting in those spaces and, and uh, Corpsify is another one. How can we get people doing things that an individual couldn't do or that doesn't have the same sort of uh, sense of, of whimsy or fun or, uh, you know, entertainment as it, as it does with, with multiple people? And basically the, the principle of the thing is, is you know, that hold a piece of paper in thirds and one person draws a head, another person draws a torso, another person draws legs, but all they've seen is the connection point. So nobody sees the entire drawing until it's opened up for everyone to see. Well, we're just awesome. digitizing that uh, and doing it through, uh, through Facebook Connect and we're going to be able to add sorting and you know, sending personal challenges to people. Uh, we're, you know, as we can, we're, we're adding to it. Uh, the problem with internal projects is once you get them out there, it's really hard because then you start working. Love more oh. people to work, to play with Corpsify and give us feedback. It's been uh, it's been really fun. Uh, Gar uh, Garipic uh, wants to know. He's presuming you have an iPhone. What is your favorite iPhone app? Well, uh, my favorite iPhone app is the Urban Daddy app that we created. Everybody should go and download it. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's real neat. Although it's only really if you live in major U.S. cities. So, uh, you should actually go to um, the Hidden Forest is also one that I really really love. Um, it's uh, it's like a kids game, uh, with augmented reality and location. Hard to describe, but it's really, uh, truly innovative. Um. Someone was asking earlier, and it's the interface is sort of weird tonight. I'm not seeing all the usernames, so, uh, so I can't give credit. Um, is does Big Spaceship have any plans or aspirations to expand to other cities? Um, I would say a definite maybe. I mean, there's you know, uh, there's a good reason to do it. We would certainly do it, and I think um, you know, I would love to uh, have a, an excuse to Europe, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, right now we can get a lot done with clients that are pretty uh, far flung around the world straight from So it's a, uh, and everybody wants an excuse to come here if, they, if they're not here already, so it worked out really well for us. Um, uh, Jessica? I know you want to start the London office. <laughs> <laughs> I take it that's one of your employees? Our copywriter. All right. Is, it, uh, is, is there anything that you would have done different than Big Spaceship? Any, any sort of occurrence that after it finished you were like, uh, yeah, I wish I had a do-over? Uh, half of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It, it not no one thing jumps to mind uh you know our our vice president uh who handles all of our client engagements has an expression uh uh called uh, uh you know fail forward faster um which i think is a great a great one um and uh 
not consciously, <laughs> certainly, but I think I was doing a whole lot of that. Uh, make your mistakes and you just try to learn from them, and I've made m more. Uh, the, I don't have any other way of, uh, of answering. Um, happiness wants to know uh, what is dear to your heart or what experience inspires you? The, the constant, what's your inspiration? What inspires you, Michael? Question. That question inspires me. Um, I, uh, I mean, I, I have a kid, and you know, it's a really trite answer, but it really is true. Um, and um, he's. Uh, I'm losing a lot of audio. Oh, I'm looking at my levels again. Help. I think you're back. Am I back? I think you're back. It really is. I just have to look to my left and suddenly... How bizarre is that? If there's a magnetic pull in the speaker in your ear, I think it's messing things up. Um, so anyways, you know, as trite as it sounds, it really is pretty inspiring to, uh, to get to talk to a little two-and-a-half-year-old who's... A I just, you know, I mean, there's just stuff out there, you know, I mean, it's just how, but I try to see as much film and TV and art and do whatever I can possibly do with happening in the world. Uh, awesome. Um, we're, we're, we're dropping out a lot of noise here, so I think uh, I'm going to start to wrap this up. I think our, uh, our feeds have hit their max here. So um, let me uh, just start wrapping up by saying thank you so much for taking the time of your crazy schedule to come and talk to the web design uh, or design community on the web. Um, this is Design Chat. Uh, check us out. We're here every week. We talk to interesting people from all over the design world, all over the world, literally. Um, designchat.info. Uh, we're gonna. We've got a lot of um, chats that need to be posted there. Please uh, be patient. They're gonna be there soon. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Hoopajube and at Design Chat. My name is Ryan McGovern. Um, and uh, also thank you to Samana Mason, uh, the agency where we broadcast this show from in West Dundee, Illinois. They've been amazing uh, and helped me out with the show. There's there's no way that I could do the show without them. So. Um, thank you to everybody who showed up in the room. Uh, if you weren't here earlier, uh, put your Twitter names up there so everybody can follow everybody. Just put your, uh, put your website links up there so everybody can see who you are and what you're doing. Uh, drink beer, design responsibly. I love it. That should be our new tagline, Garific. That's awesome. Usually we are drinking beer on the show because it's like an 8 o'clock show, but uh, I'm a little hungover from last night, so I'm definitely hitting up the Gatorade right now. Uh, so uh, we'll be back with a beer next week, uh, guaranteed. So um, just another thank you uh, in, in closing, Michael. It's been awesome. Thanks very much. It was really fun and, uh, and surreal watching all these uh, comments go by. Thanks. Really cool, man. fun. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.